Okay guys, um, this is our last Keystone remediation video for biology. So we're finally pretty much there. Um, I'm not really gonna go over too much natural selection uh, evolution with you guys, because I think you guys got that really good in class. Um, just to review, just so I don't forget at the end of the video, um, homologous, analogous, and vestigial structures. Um, the easiest one of the three is the vestigial. These are structures and organisms that were once there in previous ancestors, but they no longer serve a purpose, so they probably either aren't there anymore or they have gotten really, really, really small. For instance, um, in whales, they have the, the pelvis and the femur. Um, this is because whales are, are mammals and they were once on land, but now they're not on land, they are ocean dwellers, so um, they no longer have a need for those, those back legs. So they got smaller and smaller and smaller, and now they just have these these bones inside um, that don't really serve a purpose. So that's vestigial. Uh, for homologous and analogous structures, homologous, um, these are going to be organisms that are really closely related. Remember uh, the prefix homo means same, so homologous begins with homo. They have the same common ancestor, so same ancestry, um, but the whatever structure it might be, they now have a different function. For example, um, for us, our, our arms, that is a homologous structure to the flippers of um, dolphins, or if we want to talk about like the bat wing, um, they all have the same internal structure, but they have a different function. Now analogous structures, these are things that um, they have the same function, but they don't have the same ancestry. In other words, they don't have a common ancestor. For example, um, if we have like a dinosaur under the water, obviously they're gonna have fins, they're gonna have flippers. Dolphins, um, same thing. And fish, they're gonna have flippers, okay? If we wanna throw sharks in there, we can throw sharks in there. Um, the dolphin is a mammal, okay? The dinosaur is technically like a reptile, and the um, fish, well, that's a fish, okay? And shark, it's a fish. They're completely differently related. They're, they're not related in any way, but they all have the same function. And this is because of the environment they live in. The environment, you know, an aquatic environment, um, it's so similar that, you know, with all the animals, they have to have, you know, structures that'll help them to survive in these environments. So that's homologous, analogous, and vestigial structures, guys. And I'm not gonna go over uh, much more of ecology and evolution than that, okay? But just to review genetics real quick, uh, I'm not gonna do many Punnett squares because I think you guys were, were good on the Punnett squares, but just to review our different forms of inheritance, we had complete, incomplete, and co-dominance, and these were the main three. We'll go over sex length real quick before the video is over, but I gave a little prompt here where red, I don't know what it is, flowers, whatever. Um, red is dominant to white, okay? I don't care what the structure is. I just know I have two phenotypes listed here. Okay, phenotypes are what we can see, right? We can't, um, or we have the genotypes, we have the phenotypes, okay? We can't see a genotype. The genotype is made up of alleles. If you remember, with the alleles, you are gonna get one allele from mom, one allele from dad, and this is all through uh, meiosis, and they're gonna make the, the meiosis is gonna make our sex cells, sperm and egg. And when that sperm and egg come together, then you have a complete set of chromosomes. So essentially when sperm and egg come together and fertilization happens, you now have 46 chromosomes. You get 23 from mom and you get 23 from dad, okay? And once those come together, um, we have our homologous chromosomes. In other words, if we're talking about chromosome 18, we have one from mom, one from dad. There are two chromosomes for that specific number, which I said was 18. They're called homologous chromosomes. So um, that's how we get your genotype through the alleles. The phenotype is what those alleles represent, okay? What the genotype essentially encodes for. So again, if we have red dominant to white, let's start off with complete dominance. And I'm gonna list the genotypes and the phenotypes here. So to start off with the genotype, okay? I'm just gonna use R since I got red and it's a real easy letter. Um, if we are homozygous dominant, our genotype is gonna be big R, big R, okay? Um, if we are heterozygous, our genotype is gonna be big R, little r. And if we're homozygous recessive, it's gonna be little r, little r. 
If you remember, we did prefixes. We did um, the prefix homo and homeo. We also did the prefix hetero. Uh, homeo and homo meant the same and hetero meant different. So if we are homozygous, that tells us we have two of the same letter, whether they are both capital or both lowercase. That's why both of those are homozygous. And you just gotta look towards the second letter, or um, second word, sorry. This is dominant, so two capital letters. This one says recessive, so two lowercase letters. Now, heterozygous, there's no word after it because we don't need it. We only have two letters to choose from, capital and lowercase. So if you are heterozygous, hetero means different, you're gonna have one capital letter, and you're gonna have one lowercase letter, okay? So those are your genotypes for complete dominant. Um, let's do the phenotypes, okay? So if it is complete dominance, what this means is we only need one dominant allele, in other words, one capital letter, in order to show that dominant phenotype, okay? So if it's big R, big R, our phenotype is going to be red. Okay, um, if it's heterozygous, okay, we still got one capital letter, so it's still gonna be red. As long as we got that one capital letter, it's red. And then our last one, this one is going to be the white. Okay, the white phenotype. So, and that's all for complete dominance, guys. That's all you really have to know. Um, on your keystone, you might have to identify, uh, if they give you a heterozygous one, they say, okay, homozygous dominant is red, heterozygous is also red. Um, you might have to say, okay, what, what type of inheritance is it? Well, it's complete dominance because as long as it has one capital letter, it shows that dominant phenotype, all right? Uh, second one, incomplete dominance. The nice thing about these is that the homozygous dominant and the homozygous recessive are always gonna be the same genotype and always gonna be the same um, phenotype. So we're still gonna have our big R, big R here, and it's still gonna be red. We're still gonna have our little r, little r here, and it's still gonna be white. The difference always comes with these inheritance in the heterozygous uh, character. So if we have heterozygous, we're still gonna have the big r, little r. That's not going to change. The change is gonna be in the phenotype that we see. And this is how we can get some different phenotypes. So incomplete dominance the phenotype for the heterozygous character is a blend of the two. So if we put red and white together and blend them together, mix them up literally, no, not physically, because if it's flowers, you know, you mix them up, they're just going to um, break and, and be very brittle. But for this one, you mix these two colors together and we would get pink. So that's how we distinguish incomplete dominance from complete dominance. Without the heterozygous, we can't do that. Just knowing the homozygous dominant and the homozygous recessive, we can't differentiate between complete dominance and incomplete dominance, okay? Um, now, the last one with codominance, guys, sometimes I'll only use one letter, but if you remember from what we went over in class, the prefix co means together. If you cooperate with someone, you are working together with them. So we're still gonna have our big R, big R here, and it's still gonna be red. This one over here is still gonna be white, okay? But sometimes they might use two letters, which really throw you off, it, you know, changes things up a little bit. But instead of using an R, because they're dominant together, we might use a W here, okay? And for the middle one, again, it's heterozygous, we're gonna have our W, all right? Difference in the phenotype, once again, for this one, we are no longer going to have a pink color. We're no longer gonna have a red color. Instead, we are going to have both colors shown. So I don't know what it's gonna look like, but just to give you an example of it, it might be red with white spots or white stripes or something like that, okay? So that is codominance. We see them together. We see both phenotypes, okay? Um, those are your three main types of inheritance, guys, okay? So as long as you get that with those, you'll be fine on the regular inheritance. Um, moving on from there, the last one we gotta go over is sex link. Now sex link is gonna deal with the uh, sex chromosomes of the individual. So we are going to have males and females in sex link. We'll have our male and we'll have our female. Uh, I'll do an example with male pattern baldness, okay? 
Uh, we could also do color blindness. They're inherited in the same way. They're inherited through recessive allele. So if we have male pattern baldness, okay, I'll put you not affected here. And we'll do affected over here. So again, guys, we are going to be dealing with the sex chromosomes. So females, they are going to be X, X. Males, they are going to be X, Y. Okay? Now here's the difference. Only the X is going to carry alleles for this, which is different than our incomplete dominant, complete dominant, and codominant. For males, we only have one allele to carry these traits. So if we're talking about um, male pattern baldness, okay, obviously baldness is what we're talking about, people going bald. Right? If you are not affected by baldness, this means you have hair. If you are affected by baldness, it means well, you're bald. Okay. So if you are not affected, let's talk about what the genotype is going to be for male and females. Females is easy. Um, we can actually have two of them for not affected. I'm going to use capital letter B for this. Okay. So they could be X big B, X big B, meaning they have hair. Okay. Females can also be X big B x little b, which means, again, they have hair. It's almost like complete dominance for this. They still have hair. But instead of calling these um, females heterozygous, we can also call them carriers. They carry the gene for baldness, but they are not going to show baldness, OK? So that's females. Um, if a female is affected, only one genotype will bring her no hair. Um, that's going to be homozygous recessive on both X chromosomes, okay? So that is for our females. You guys can see that two genotypes, the females are safe. One genotype, the female is bald. This is why we don't see many females bald. For guys, remember, only the X is going to carry, okay, these alleles. So X big B, Y, means that that male... Um, if it's X big B Y, that means that male is not bald. That male has hair. However, if the male is X little B Y, that male is bald. Okay. Now, just going off statistics here, females have three genotypes. Two, they're safe. Two out of three. That's sixty-seven percent. Sixty-seven percent of females should have hair. Thirty-three percent should be bald if we lived in a perfect world. Um, for males, it's 50-50. We only have two genotypes. You either have hair or you don't, okay? There's no carriers here, okay? So that is for uh, sex length. This is the same thing for colorblindness, guys, okay? This is why more males are bald. This is why more males are colorblind because we only have one genotype that saves us, okay? And we have a 50% shot of being colorblind, okay? Um, the other thing I wanted to go over is how are you inheriting the sex? If you're a guy, okay, um, me, I'm slightly colorblind, okay, I don't see colors too great. How did I get that way? Well, your dad is XY and your mom is XX. If you are male, your dad gave you the Y. Your mother gave you the X. So if we have a male child and he's colorblind, it was because his mother gave him the X. If there is a male child and he uh, is bald later in life, it is because the mother gave him the X, okay? So that's why he is um, bald. So it's always the woman who gives the male son the X, okay? Um, we did a lot of pedigrees in class, guys. I don't think you need to do uh, any more of those. Uh, just make sure you know circles are female. If they are a filled-in circle, that means they're affected by something. Uh, squares are going to be males. Again, if it's a filled-in square, uh, that male is affected by something, okay? Uh, last thing I wanted to go over with you guys is um, the chromosomes, just different mutations we can have through chromosomes. If we have a chromosome here, okay, um, if we were to take this chunk out, and I'm going to color both sides here, just so you guys can see what's going on. Um, if we were to take this chromosome, and a mutation happens, 
And now the chromosome looks like this. Okay. Um, that's called inversion. What we did is we take, took a, a, a small portion of this chromosome, switched it upside down. Okay. That's inversion. So that's one type of chromosomal mutation. Okay. Um, another type of chromosome mutation would be, well, if I have this area here, okay, and instead of switching it or doing anything crazy with it, it's just not there anymore. Very simple. That's deletion. Okay, deletion. So we just took a, a chunk of that out. Um, another one you might see, guys, on the keystone is non-disjunction. They might give you a karyotype for this. Real easy way to identify a non. Uh, what happened, you know, with the product of non-disjunction was, let's say they give you a karyotype, and I'm just going to do a small piece of a karyotype here. We'll say it's chromosome number 18. Um, if you have either just one chromosome there, or on the other hand, if you have three chromosomes there, that is non-disjunction. So during meiosis, the chromosomes failed to separate properly, and that sex cell either had not enough chromosomes in there or too many. And that caused the um, child to either have three or one. So they either have three, which is trisomy, or one that's um, monosomy. So that's how you determine if it is um, non-disjunction, guys, okay? So again, you just look at the numbers, and if you don't see two chromosomes for each one, you know, for 17, we want two chromosomes. For number 19, we want two chromosomes. But if we see, you know, one with three, rot row, okay? Um, the other one, guys, is translocation, okay? Break the word apart, translocate. It's when we have two chromosomes here. Make them different colors. Okay? And something happens where we now have, as a product, a piece of this chromosome went on that. It translocated to another area. So again, just another chromosome mutation you guys can see. Um, I think that's pretty much it, guys. Again, make sure um, review evolution, natural selection, um, a little bit of ecology we went over. But I think you guys are pretty good on there. So I think you guys are, um, are all ready. All right, guys. Happy studying. Have a good night.